Hello, good evening, and welcome to this Dead Rail stream, the Southern Fuel Run 170 171 Eastbourne Brighton Selhurst, kicking off in around about eight minutes' time. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap. <laughs>
Good evening, hello, and welcome to this Dad Row live stream. R170 slash 171 is running out of fuel. Let's get it up to Selhurst. Drinks and light refreshments ready. Stream starting in two and a half minutes. And on all train services, this includes e-cigarettes. is a safety announcement. It is not permitted to cycle, skateboard, or rollerblade within the station building. Good evening and welcome to another Dabra stream with me, Richard. If this does happen to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name is Richard. I'm a mainline freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. This is my wonderful son, Sammy, who doesn't want to go to bed, but he does like trains, so I'm sure he'll be joining us at some point, sitting here um, nagging me and, uh, and watching the stream as he does. Okay, who have we got in tonight? Astro Pengu and Artie on the moderating. Thank you very much, guys. Artie. It's your birthday. Happy birthday! Just for you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Rave the train spot on Leo Low, RAF spotter on the membership. Uh, did see a few others in earlier. West Coast Mainline 730, Trainboy 55, KO, Steve Caddy, Concord 9289, Random Hips fan. Um, East Midlands Railway fan. East Midlands Railway fan, orangutan in bed, and many, many others. 99 of you lovely people, to be precise, which is fantastic. Okay, before we jump in, and as always, all views and opinions expressed within this stream are solely may, may not affect those of any companies that may be employed by or associated with, and all of that absolutely brilliant stuff. So, today's run, we are going to take the Class 170 from the um, Five Circle. We've reskinned it into 171, Southern 171 livery, uh, and the proviso, or kind of the scenario surrounding today's run, we're doing a service from Eastbourne over to Brighton, a passenger service, but our train is running low on fuel. So when we get to Brighton, Control are instructing us to take the train empty to Selhurst depot for fuel. So that is what we are doing today. So without further ado, let's press our button 
and jump straight into Train Sim World. I do apologise if there's a little bit of noise behind me. Like I say, Sammy didn't want to go to bed tonight. I delayed the stream to nine o'clock in hope that he might. Um, but the clock's changing. The clock's going forward sort of really upset his um, mm. sleep patterns, unfortunately. So, right, we mm. are on the East Coast way. We're in timetable mode. We do the free one free timetable. We are spawning on foot at Eastbourne. Uh, it's here somewhere, isn't it? There we go, Eastbourne. Um, and we'll go at 10.30, because from memory, when these diesel services, the Ashford to Brighton diesel services run, they used to depart about 10.30 from Eastbourne. 1st of April, April Fool's Day. I had a really good video idea for April Fool's, but I just had absolutely no time to make it, which was a little bit annoying. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because I'm saving it for next year. Welcome, Tommy Studio. Tom Dunn to Dunrail. Great to have you here. Okay, let's spawn our train in. Uh, we're not spawning on that pl platform. Ten twenty-five to Brighton. Okay, this looks ambitious. Um. Is he going to hit the stops? No, just. Just. Okay. <laughs> let's see if we can get out in front of that train. So let's spawn our train in. Um, 170. Deliveries. Southern. Spawn. Well, hey, there we are. 174.05. We're going to be calling it Polgate, Lewis and Brighton. Um, which was kind of the calling pattern for these when they were in operation. Let's just get in here and get our pathway set up to see if we can get out in front of that passenger train. So we're going to set our path to platform 8 at Brighton, I think should do it. Platform 7, platform 8. Platform 8, most of these usually go in on. Hopefully we're going to get the signal out before that one there. I don't want to follow that all the way to Brighton. We've got the signal, perfect. Okay, so let's get our cab set up. AWS in, DSD in, Vigilance in, key in, let me know guys if you want the game audio up or down, we can absolutely do that, uh, headlights today running, tail lights off and doors on the left hand side, uh, we better turn our radio on and uh, We'll put it up as special. There we go. So this is my own version of the Southern Livery that I made on Creators Club. My son has just brought me a cup of tea. Fantastic. I'm sure he'll want something in return. Um, there is a better version of the 170 on Creators Club, but um, unfortunately I couldn't find it earlier on. But yeah, there's definitely a better skin on the 170 um, out on Creators Club. Can't hear in game. Game audio should be coming through. Uh, let me know, guys, if you can hear that. I will just have a look at the settings. Um, Steam Cloud, okay, can't hear in game. Should be able to. Let's, let's just have a little look at my settings. Um, Game audio, yeah, you should be able to hear that. April 4th, oh, 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 I've been done. April Fools, he says. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I should know better, I should know better than to trust you a lot after all these years. Right, okay. Should we leave our window open? Yeah, let's leave the window open so we can hear the sound of the engines. All right, DRA off, into forward. Doors locked, let's get going. Dear oh dear oh dear. Your voice is a bit low. I have turned my mic down because I thought it was coming through a little bit too loud. Let me know if that's any better.
Right, we are off. We've got a green. Right, we're going to attempt to do this HUD list because I signed this route in real life. So, there should be no excuses for team business with the manager. Ah, uh, yeah, Nick K makes a good point. He, um, Steve, Steam Cloud Cave, you're the April Fool because it's after midday. Right, we're 25 coming out of Eastbourne. I'm so pleased we've got this training game at last. Hey Jake, hello and welcome. Hello Sammy. Come to see the trains. Welcome to Dabrow guys, it's uh, from my family to yours. So if this is the first video you're, you're watching by me, Sammy is non-verbal autistic. He's absolutely amazing and is Autism Awareness Month this month. He's got his chair, he's just going to sit there, hopefully quietly, and watch the stream. Right, let's get this guy in, we're good for 70. <laughs> Steve, it's not a proper stream unless it ends with a spat. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. We've got a reputation for that later at uh, the moment. Orangutan in bed. I have the manager on urgent call. That's wise. Very, very wise. Right, we're not stopping at Hamden Park. We are going fast to Polgate, Lewis and then Brighton. Are the volumes okay, guys? Can you hear me over to the game audio? Do you want the game audio up or down a bit? We can close the train window. That that would certainly help. Roy Michael Taylor, good evening from Derbyshire. Hope you've had a good weekend. Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Uh, I've been on like 3.15 starts for the last week. Um, so I'm going on to late shifts tomorrow. So uh, we've got time for a stream because I don't have to be up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Leo Lowe, good question. Can a driver drive a route they don't sign? You can drive a route you don't sign, providing you've got a route conductor. A route conductor would be someone that does sign that route, and they'll basically be telling you where to go. It's like a human GPS. However, the rule book states if the route conductor signs the route and the traction, they must drive the train. So normally what you'll have is you'll have um, the driver would be the person that actually signs the train, and then you have a route conductor who signs the route. Volume is fine. Fantastic. Much better with the window shut. Monica, your son is really cute. Come and take him, Monica. <laughs> Hamden Park was 70 miles an hour through here. I'm just checking where my power handle is. Ko, I am also. I also have autism. Autism is is. It's an amazing thing. It really is. Right, 30 if we're going around the right towards um, Hastings. I've banged on about it a lot. I would love to have that in game. And then we are good for 80, but we've got a 35 coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Taylor Simulator Rouse, remember when the 171 went to Hastings? Was some much easier and quicker. Um, much easier and quicker. Love making trips. <laughs> Love making trips quicker if I can, even though I love trips. <coughs> I had to repunctuate that. I was like, love making trips? What are you up to? <coughs> right, there we go. There's our 35 warning. Let's get a bit of break in. And the 35 is around the corner into Polgate, which is our first station stop. So as we are approaching our first station stop, shall we have... Our first round. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. If you haven't seen this game before, guys, I want to get some break in actually because we're going to be speeding. If you haven't seen this game before, guys, post your numbers between 1 and 25 in the chat. I'll pick the third number that comes up on my screen and you will soon get the hang of it. Monica, yesterday I heard some fool hadn't put his train in neutral at a station and at a red signal was out of the cab as well so I heard the DST alarm and laughed so hard what are your thoughts on that 
So what's what's happened there? They've they've got out the cab and not put the train in neutral. Yeah, that's not clever. Ko. Okay, just as we're approaching Polgate, Gareth Kemp 84, you are the third number on my screen with number three. Let's play locomotive livery location. Here's how it's going to work. Box number three, 10 seconds for the locomotive livery and location, please. Well, that's helped with the location. That's narrowed it down a bit. As always, let me know your thoughts in the chat. I was actually at Polgate Station on Friday, Saturday morning. I don't even know what day of the week it is. The bank holiday weekend's proper thrown me. Um, took a Colas locomotive off of an engineering site. They were renewing the junction that we've just passed over down at Willingdon. Uh, two to ten car mark. That will do us quite nicely. And it should be just about in the drop light, is about where we want to be. That will do. And the doors on the left hand side. Now, no one's going to attempt to get on and off because we are in, technically, we're in free roam mode. Uh, this would be quite a nice to make in scenario planner, actually. It's probably something I need to look at doing. Um, a ragged tang about 800 Newcastle, Steve Caddy, class 91 Grantham. Uh, you're all guessing. You're all guessing. Definitely a 66 at Skegness is alcoholic. Right, let's get going. We are off to Lewis. Beep, beep. <coughs> you are being extra noisy tonight, aren't you? I've got my cup of tea. He's got his bottle. We are 90 miles an hour. Next station stop on this service will be Lewis. <laughs> Typical Nathan trains, Richard. I'm in free roam. Does the train depart or do they stay there forever and you have to manually delete it? You talk, if you're talking about the train that you're trying to drive, typical Nathan, you need to press number 9 to go onto the map. Click on your train, and then there'll be an option that says set path. If you click on that, click where you want to go, and then it should set the route for you automatically. Right, we are off. Um, Wayne Train Lover, can you check the Discord, please? Yeah, we absolutely can, Wayne. What have we got? We have got a station. I'm not sure where that is. Um, we've also got some 166, 153, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, HST, and a 66, when I saw Richard at Key Bridge. Nice one. And if you're not already in our Discord server, you're more than welcome to join it by following the invitation link in the description below. KO, graphics are stuffers. Yeah, so this is this is still a train to well two route, I think, East Coast Way. It looks just as good as Five Circle, doesn't it? <laughs> Not sure I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> uh, those were 150, says Laserjet, my apologies. So typical Nathan, one of the streams I want to do in the next week or so um, is going to be back on the five circle, but there has been a mod released for it, so it changes all the track textures and some of the other textures, which looks very, very good. So that's definitely going to be coming up in the next week or so on the channel. Uh, I also want to jump into Simrail as well, because lots of people have been going on about that, and I think it's about time we had a little play of that on the channel. And we're also looking to do a SimSig multiplayer event in the Discord server in the next week, so if you're into your SimSig, um, then do look out for that. We are passing over Selmerston AHB, automatic half barrier crossing, on our way down towards Berwick. <laughs> Concord quite a bit better than Five Circle. <laughs> 
the views expressed, says Hannah Scott. Yeah, definitely. KO station is Darlington. Could be. KO, how is your model railway project going? Lots of bits and bobs going on in the background, KO, but nothing's been built yet. Building will start uh, in the summertime. Probably uh, we're looking July, August for the building work to start in anger. <laughs> Laserjet, what map are we going to be playing on SimSig? Nothing decided yet, Laserjet. We are coming down towards Berwick. Line speed stays 90 for a little while. It does drop back down to 80 just before we get to Glind. Lovely pub here on the left-hand side, the Berwick Inn. Big Man Ting, we should try and get you to do a quiz to name all the stations on the Southern Network. Do you know what? With the exception of... I, I, I reckon I could probably do that. If you name me a route on the Southern Network, I reckon I could... Other than the Aran Valley, I reckon I could probably do that. I reckon I reckon I could I could definitely probably do that. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Uh, Mr. Gamer, yeah you can post a tamper to locomotive livery location. Uh, random hips fan, is SimSig on mobile? I don't believe it is, no. Uh, we have just passed over Selmiston AHB, automatic half barrier crossing. Lighting effects are doing something weird. Lighting effects are doing something very weird. Uh, right, what have we got? Concord 9289, you are the third number on my screen, my friend, with number 12. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Here we go, gonna give you box number 12. 10 seconds for that locomotive livery and location if you can. Oh, what's that? Any ideas? TR9 train spotting, hello, how are you? Uh, Jazel says SimSig is Windows only. And we are just passing over ripe AHB level crossing. Uh, Nick Fleming, if you're ever on diagram through Ashford Surrey, make sure you give the guy on the platform with the camera a good few times. Nick, I'm actually going through there tomorrow, but it's going to be early hours of, uh, say early hours of the morning. I'm going to be going through there very late at night on an Eastleigh to Who Junction service. Cab is bright. Yeah, something, something weird has just started happening with the lighting. It's, uh, it's an older train sim route. It's a little bit bugged out. Right, we've got a speed restriction coming up in a minute. I think it's an 80. I've just got to double check. It is an 80, and there it is. Well, hey, I knew something. Pig and Bob, hello! Train spot from Berkshire, West Midlands Railway 730 Rugby. Concord, Class 730, Harrow and Willstone. KO, Class 66, Newcastle. Peter Young, Cardiff Flirt Thing. Big man Ting was going to say Tamworth. Chip Bastion, good evening, hello. Yeah, KO, it, it's... We'll try kind of... Is that any better? Yeah, it's train sim with its funky kind of lighting mods and bits and bobs going on. Wookie 390, 7.30 at Bletchley. Trainboy55, what route do you do in real life? Loads. <laughs> so, as a freight driver, my route card extends from Southampton um, right up to sort of Ashford in Kent. Um, nearly all of Sussex, bar a couple of routes. Yeah, qu quite a lot. Quite a lot. Typical Nathan, uh, I'm not currently playing in scenario mode. This is literally just... Uh, free roam. So I'm in timetable mode and I've just spawned the train on the track. Well, I don't think we've passed any AI services yet, which is interesting. Random Hibs fan, we're currently on the East Coastway. We are going to be loading up uh, London Commuter as part of the next section of the game up to yeah. Selhurst. No. So we're approaching Southern Junction, which is where the Seaford line diverges off. I'm just letting the speed run out a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, Nick Fleming, it's probably going to be a 66, but it might be a 69. I don't, I don't know what it's going to be. Train boy, yeah, 66 is 69, 73s, 57s. Bit of, bit of everything. Hey Ben, how are we doing? Good evening. So we are just coming up to Southern Junction. Our line speed is going to drop down in a few minutes to, I want to say 60, 70, 60. <laughs> There's the 70. Train to from Somerset, what is your favourite route and train to drive in real life? It's going to be between the 73 and the class 57 and probably this route that we're on now. Eastbourne to Hastings is, is a really nice stretch of route. Um, Eastbourne all the way through to, Hastings all the way through to Brighton is lovely. Jag 1, I have never driven along the seawall but it's on my list of two do routes, definitely. Gareth Kemp 84, speaking of 69, saw one at York today, brilliant. I have not been on a 69 for a little while, but yeah, tomorrow could be the day. Uh, so tomorrow, Southwestern Mainline, I'm going to be going from Eastley up as far as Byfleet and Newhall. Um, then we turn off at Byfleet and Newhall and go via Virginia Water, Feltham, and then it'll either go via Hounslow or Richmond up to um, Clapham. Right, we've got position one, route indicator, it's 10 miles an hour coming into Lewis. <laughs> Jeff, that's a really good question. You may not have an answer to this one, but when you're a passenger driver, if you left a station ECS, would you want an RA regardless of the rules? I just want to know how drivers feel about it. Um, yes, yeah, so my company that I used to work for when I was passenger driving, you would, you would need an RA as as uh, empty coaching stock to leave the station so the dispatch staff would either give you a green flag or you'd get an RA on the indicator in front of you but you would still need some form of dispatch away from the platform so put a little bit more braking because it is 10 miles an hour coming into Lewis Trainboy 55 I live in Lewis awesome Sam Bennett it's I want to say it's 7 Yankee 4 free And there's our three to five car mark up the top there. Sammy's being particularly noisy today, so I do apologize for that. Oh, stop, oh, stop. This is Lewis. And I think we'll, we'll have an outside shot as we pull away from here. Can someone tell me if there are AI services on free roam? There absolutely should be AI services on free roam. There is one sitting just there. I've noticed we haven't passed very many on our route, but there absolutely should be. Uh, so it is only 10 miles an hour leaving Lewis. It's probably not the best station to do a... Do an outside pull away shot from. Monica, Richard, do signals have a stereotype of being depressed or is that definitely a myth, Monica? Most of the signals I speak to are quite pleasant. Ray Gun, hello! Delivery I've ever created. I don't think I've done a bad job to be fair. Oh, we are speeding because it is 10. And now we're climbing up Falmer Bank. Line speed goes to 55. It will go up to 70 in a minute as well once we get across the A27. Let's get some power in and get it going. Richard, did you ever get to drive the 313s? Unfortunately not. Would you be allowed to take your son to work? Um, no. 
No, would, would not be allowed to do that. Uh, Rangatang in bed, most railway staff seem to enjoy what they do. I, I think it's one of those jobs. You've kind of got to have, certainly on freight, you've, you've got to have a passion for doing the job. You've got to enjoy doing the job. I think sometimes on passenger that's not necessarily the case, it's, it's just a job. But I think most, most people seem quite happy there. Roy Michael Taylor, do you take regular exams for driving rules and regulations? Yeah, we absolutely do. So we get a full driver's assessment every, depending on what level you are and your level of experience, uh, you get a full driver's assessment every, I want to say it's every three years, it might be every two years, um, but on top of that you get regular downloads of the train's black box, the OTDR, the on-train data recorder, um, and you'll get regular rides out with your manager as well to check that you're driving correctly. The the download, oh look, the sky's changed, it looks a bit better now. The downloads that you go through regularly are all random as well, so you normally won't be told about those. You just need to make sure you're driving the train correctly at all times, because that, that can happen at any time. Talking of things happen randomly, nearly 17 years on the railway, I had my very first random drugs and alcohol screening today. I don't know why I gave that a round of applause, but <laughs> right, we're going up to 70. I scored zero on the breathalyzer, and then the nurse took the <laughs> You haven't had any sugar tonight, have you, Sammy? You haven't had sugar tonight. He had the tiniest bit of Easter egg. Um, Jackson's Trains and Bus Adventures 2020, or do you like driving the Class 57s? Uh, I only got to have a go on the 57s probably four or five times, and yeah, I did very much so. They're still on my traction car, but we haven't got them on my depot, but uh, they may possibly return next year, who knows? Michael Little Johns, hello, how are we doing? I know, Artie, that, that, that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. Uh, great the train guy, so be 17 years this year. 17 years this year on the railway. It's gone incredibly quick. Will Blake, hi Richard, we briefly met at Dorking when you stopped about two months ago to grab a coffee. I'm platform staff, hope to see you soon. Thanks very much, Will. Uh, I pro I'm probably not going to be do through Dorking for um, a few months now, because we only really ever go through them when we're doing the seasonal trains, and as of next week, they have finished. Um, I say as of next week, they're not really running at the moment. Okay. AWS just fired off on a green. If that had happened in real life, we'd now want to report that at the next available opportunity. Uh, that is classed as a right side failure of the AWS system. So if you get a, an, a cautionary indication in the cab when the signal's green, that is a right side failure. However, if the signal was displaying yellow or red and we got a clear indication in the cab, that would be a wrong side failure. So we are coming to the top of Falmer Bank. Speed limit is going to drop down to 60 just as we come out the tunnel, I believe. I'm just double checking my facts. Yes. K.O., I heard you swear, Dad Rao. I try not to on stream, but I'm only human. Dad Rao, if you were given to qualify on only one loco, would it be the 56 or the 50? Oh, good question. Probably the 50. I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for class 50s. They're hoovers. Nice locos. And there is our 60 as we pop out the tunnel. So as we round infuses, the AWS is for the speed reduction. What, going from a 70 down to a 60? We wouldn't normally get an AWS for that. In order to justify an AWS, the speed reduction's got to be more than one third. You do get AWSs if it's less than a third, but generally speaking, it's, it's got to be a third. Richard, what's the next stop? Next stop on this service will be Brighton. We've just passed through Falmer. Uh, we're going to pass through Morscombe, then London Road, and finally Brighton. Trainboy55, if you're talking about on the main line, AWS is on by default. Um, you're going to take us back up to 70. We're on a downhill grade, so we'll just let that roll. Um, 
yeah, on a normal train, these switches here, you would only ever use those in the event of a failure on a safety system. They are automatically on. You, you don't touch those. If you have to isolate one of those, it's a bad day. Right, one yellow, let's get some brakes in. And that is a distance signal. We know that because it's got a little triangle on it. That means that signal cannot display a red aspect. And we're about to pass over Hodgshrove Viaduct. And if I remember correctly, because I don't drive this route very often, our red is just after Morsecombe Station. Uh, no, it's not. It's before Morsecombe Station. I told you I didn't drive this route very often. Uh, the correct thing to do, if you're not 100% sure where the signal is, is just slow down. There we go. Stepped up to one yellow. Yeah, if you're not 100% sure where the signal is, just get rid of the speed and creep. If, if in doubt, creep about. Lewis Gates, have you watched part two of the LNER TS? Oh, have they put a part two out? I watched part one with, I think it was Jess, the driver. I thought that was really, really good. Yeah, I agree, uh, Hannah. There should be an in-game option to have them on by default. I, I think that would be a good idea. I can understand why they've got them turned off by default. I can completely understand why they've, they've made the decision to do that. Um, you know, for your casual players. But I, yeah, I think there should be an option. Right, last signal was one yellow. We are red ahead as we pass through Morsecombe. Forty fifty five reduction. And I believe the signal is just around the corner here. We're going to get a warning for a. 30 or a 3530. This is a route refresher for me. I don't I think I've I think I've come across this route once this year. And there we go. I said the signal was around the corner and I still didn't put the brakes on. 20 at the AWS magnet, depending on your company's driving procedures. Well, that was 20. 20 at the magnet. And the next signal after this one is protecting Brighton Station itself, so we've got to wait for the train in front to clear uh, London Road. And we want to aim to stop roughly a coach length away from the signal. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Hey, Trainboy has donated £2 through Super Chat. Thank you very, very much, Trainboy. That is very generous. Uh, can we see the disc call? We absolutely can. DRA neutral. I know that has come off. Um, but we'll pretend we're stopping at it. So step through DRA neutral. Secure the train. Let's have a quick look. What have we got? Eddie Stober. Everybody loves some Eddie Stober. And we have got... I should know where that locates. I feel like I should know where that is. Norbury, by the looks of it. Who is posting at Norbury? And an HST. Everybody loves an HST. Okay, Jaisal Tanner, you're the third number on my screen, my friend, with number nine. Right, one yellow, red is protecting Brighton. Let's play Green. Locomotive Livery Location. Here we go, guys. Box number nine, ten seconds for that. Locomotive Livery Location, if you can. Does that help you with your location? Let me know. In the chat, as always. Uh, it's Wandsworth Common. <laughs> okay, I can only see a little bit of it. It's like locomotive location livery for me. We're going to shut off power and just let that coast. We've got the 30 coming up. Red is protecting Brighton. Um, Penguin, West Midlands Railway, 196 Wolverhampton. Orangutan in bed, 7.30 Liverpool Lime Street. Train Geek, West Midlands Railway, 7.30 at Nuneaton. Train Fort from Berks is going 7.30 at Harrow and Willstone. Uh, Jezil was hoping for a sign or something. Nothing. 
If there's any signs in the pictures, then I would have smudged them out because that would be too easy. Roy Mark Taylor, thank you for answering my question. You're full of use, full of useless information, Roy, but thank you all the same. Hey, Stu, we're all good, thank you. How are you? Good to have you here. And there's our 30 as we come over London Road via. Last signal was green, so we know we're into Brighton. Beautiful piece of engineering this is. <laughs> Um, Jake, going to Littlehampton, do you prefer Haywards Heath Way or Barnum Way? I don't think I've ever been to Littlehampton by train, Jake. That is one bit of the southern network I don't sign. And um, we're slowing down because we're 20 coming into Brighton. Problem with doing it at Huddles is I don't know what brake step or power notch I'm in, so that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Ah, uh, Stu, the weekday stream was fantastic. It's, it's nice to stream in the afternoon sometimes. Uh, Steve Kelly, so the advice is a loco length away, but I mean, the way I look at it is anything before the red signal is your space. If you're stopping two or three loco lengths away, not normally going to be too much of a problem. The only time it might be a problem is if you've got a long train and you need to clear the signal section behind you. So if you stop really far back and you're not in clear of a, like a passing loop or something, you might have to pull forward. Or if the signal, if the signal is what is known, what is known as approach controlled, um, which is something that doesn't exist technically, it, it does exist. We just, as train drivers, we don't acknowledge the existence of approach controlled signals because you should never expect a signal to clear when you approach it. Um, but basically an approach controlled signal is a signal that will only clear when you get close to it. Uh, it's purposely, he purposefully held at red to force the drivers of the trains to slow down. Um, so sometimes if you stop too far back and the signal is approach controlled it won't come off. We are now arriving at Brighton. Please ensure you take all your personal belongings with you. Uh, Ludwig Tails, hello, how are we doing? Good to have you here. Welcome to the channel. Okay, brake step free, DRA, neutral, offside door release. It's good practice to get up out the seat and press the button that is facing the wrong way. And we're going to shut our cab down. Off, tail lights on, no automatic tail lights on this. And off, key off. And we are going to go to the coffee shop and get a coffee. There we are. Beautiful. Okay, and why we are going to the coffee shop, what happens is our phone rings and controller on the phone. Driver, your, local, your unit has just flagged up for low fuel. We don't think you're going to make it all the way back to Ashford. Is there any chance you can go empty coaching stock to Selhurst to refuel so we can recover the unit for the peak time service? We'll pay you a 12 hour rest day for it. <laughs> I probably won't say that last bit. Yeah, okay, control, no problem. We can take that unit up to Selhurst for fuel. That is not an issue at all. Right, so what we're going to do, because unfortunately the route is not merged, we're going to have to jump out of that route and jump into jump into the London commuter line there uh, we're going to spawn on foot I do apologise for everything going on behind me the house has just gone mad stand by
I do apologise, the house has just gone absolutely mad. This is the problem with not having a dedicated streaming room. Being a grown-up, I'm not allowed to have my own bedroom that I can lock myself in. It's, it's Being grown-up is overrated, I tell you. Right, so we're going to spawn in at 11.05, because that's about the time we were there. Unfortunately, the roots are not merged. What well, If the roots were merged, that would be brilliant. There is a mod for Edinburgh Glasgow and the Five Circle, which merges the roots together. That We need that. We need that in-game for more roots. But we can make it up as we go along. We can pretend we've been for a coffee. Orangutan, managers turned up. They heard about the rest day working. And when we get into London to Brighton, you can see London commuter. You can see instantly the route just looks so much better. Right, let's put our train back. And then we'll take an ECS move up to... Selhurst, and that will be us. Livery, Southern, Spawn. Uh, I don't know if this is going to have passengers on it or not. Hopefully it won't. There we go. Well, hey, we are back. Right, so we've grabbed a coffee. The platform staff have now walked through the train and made sure everyone's off. So on the ends of the coaches, it's not modelled here, but on the ends of the coaches, you have a little square... Um, yeah, I don't think they've got them on the freeway freeze. On the ends of the coaches, there's a little like square plate, and you put a T-key in the square plate and turn it, and that locks the doors on that coach. So what you normally have when a train's going empty to the depot is you'll have a member of staff walking through the inside and a member of staff on the outside. And as the member of staff passes through each coach, the member of staff on the outside will, will lock that door locally. Um, to make sure nobody else can get on. You have to do that just to make sure everyone's off. You don't want to be over-carrying anyone to the depot. That's, uh, that's definitely tea and biscuits for your manager if you take take passengers into the depot. Especially if they haven't got a ticket. Right, okay, let's... Shall we go via the quarries or shall we go via the Red Hills? We might go via the Red Hills. I think it's just a, a little bit more of an interesting drive, to be fair. Uh, key in. Headlights on. Um, we're still on the red, so DRA is set. GSMR is on. Right, we can set our... to not in service. Scrolling through everything. There we go, not in service. Can you fill up love? Can you fill up at Lovers Walk? No, Lee, I I don't. There isn't fueling facilities at Lovers Walk, so the fueling facilities for Selhurst, uh, and the fueling facilities at St Leonard's West Marina as well. So, set path. Transport. Uh, Lee, I says via Red Hill. Transport from Bucks. This is via Red Hill. Chaos says Red Hill. Stu says Quarry. Um, Jackson says Quarry. Uh, it's yeah, I think I think we're we're going Red Hill. We're going we go via the Red Hills. So let's put our first waypoint in as the up fast at Red Hill. Hopefully it's gonna acknowledge that. <coughs> Red Hill up through. Okay, signal is off. Into forward. Let's get going. We are now at Empties to Depot. Right, we can actually go hubless again because, famous last words, I signed this route so I should know where I'm going, in theory. Um, Marissa, as someone watching from Scotland, I literally have no idea where anything is on this route. So, Jack, what is the small screen in the right of the window. So this small screen here is what's known as the DAS, the driver advisory system. So on routes that are fitted with it and trains that are fitted with it, what you'll get on this screen here is you'll get advice to the driver telling the driver uh, when they can shut off power and coast. Um, and it basically, it, it relates to kind of, it links in with the timetable. So if the driver's running early, they can save a bit of fuel by coasting, driving a little bit more efficiently. It's, it's, I've never driven anything that's had it on it working, but from what I understand, it's a pretty good system. Lovers Walk, 387 in the depot there. 
and we're 20 at the moment going up to 40 75 around the corner and then 90 uh, Lewis no I don't I'm afraid all my route knowledge is kind of down in the south um, Ludwig Tails, did you once work with Southern before you went to do freight? No. Um, I worked for the company next door to Southern. Right, we are off. We are good for 40. 313 over in Lover's Walk. Speed limit's going to go up to 75 just here. And then once we get the other side of Patcham Tunnel, it'll go up to 90. Uh, does the game allow you into Selhurst Depot, Sussex Rail Infusers? It absolutely does. Steve, yeah, I did briefly see the pop-up on that message. It's 15 miles an hour. Thank you very much, bud. Uh, Ludwig Tales, wait, Thameslink. Unfortunately, there is no Class 700 Thameslink layer on this route. However, there is a mod you can download if you're playing on PC. Uh, to do that. Richard, why do you avoid saying Southeastern? I just said Southeastern. No, I know what you mean though. Social media policies and all that sort of thing. This is probably rare track for a 171, this, this particular stretch of line as we come through Preston Park. Um, so there were daily or should I say nightly moves to Selhurst Depot. Um, but they used to go up via Kima. So this is, and this is engineering work, so this is probably quite sort of daytime 171 going up the Brighton Main is, is probably quite a rare move. It's good for 75, Preston Park Siding's on the left. We're going to go round to the right, round to the left, through Patcham Tunnel, line speed will go up to 90. Yeah, Steve, uh, a lot of the depots are not particularly well modelled on here. So I don't I don't sign Selhurst Depot in real life. I, I sign the fork arrival roads, and I can do the, the move from Selhurst round to Norwood. Um, but I don't actually sign the depot complex. Orangutan in bed, right, I'm off. I've got an induction tomorrow before I get to play with big boy trains. Oh, nice one, my friend. Enjoy. I'm hoping we're going to catch something up and start encountering cautionary signals, which will make it a little bit more interesting. There is our 90. There is Patcham Tunnel. Let's keep this thing wide open. Once you get up a little bit of speed in this, sort of 80, 90, 100, not that we're going to get to 100 today, uh, the, there is a horrible whistling noise in the cab, which is something on the 170, which I think Rivet Games need to look into and sort of find out what's going on. David Donnell, 172 watching now. Hey David, that wasn't spam. Nightbot. <laughs> <That's> <coughs> Excuse me, Nightbot, that was very naughty. I saw that message. But thank you very much, David, for your effort. Yeah, if you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. It really does help me and the channel out. Yes, yeah, I'll be up for that, Steve. No worries. Um, Jackson's Trains and Bus Adventures, have you done any scrap moves? I haven't, no. So going round to the right, we're going to enter the famous Clayton Tunnel. Lots of train crew reports seeing apparitions within this tunnel. I've not seen anything, but you never know. Right, should we press the button? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Let's get those numbers posted. KO, I'll try not to spad. Um, Ludwig Tales, being a driver, is it is it really stressful? Or is it something that you can try and improve as like a skill to help you do the job? It it's not inherently stressful, but it can be stressful. Um, is the way I would put it. So one of the most important things in the job is your non-technical skills, which is how you are as a person, sort of understanding why you make the decisions you make as a human being. It's it's yes, yeah, an interesting topic. Interesting topic. Um, locomotive for location delivery, pig and bob. Let's see if we can do this before we get out the other side of Clayton. Number 14. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. We haven't. Right, we are number 14. 10 seconds, guys. Locomotive Livery Location if you can. We've got wires and a bridge, but do you recognise that bridge? 
Is that your local station? Have you been there before? Let me know your thoughts. You can now hear that really horrible whiny noise that I was talking about when you get this thing up to speed. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it sounds awful. And we can see the beautiful tunnel portal here at Clayton as we come out the other side. Dodgy camera angles, lovely. Uh, Tragey's gone, Westminster's Row 730 in Nuneaton, Penguin's gone Nuneaton, Monica's gone Birmingham, Moor Street. Great, the train guy is the GX460 for train sim worth it. The, I think it was Master Key Simulations done the 460, it's really good. Uh, I did do a video on it on the channel a little while ago, it should still be up somewhere. Durafest needs a can of raid. It doesn't sound good, does it? It really doesn't. Richard, what's that noise inside the 170? That, I think the best way to describe that would be some sort of Rivet Games bug. KO, 66 Stevenage. Adam, what a lovely noise. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Thank goodness for the yellow signals. We can start to slow the train down a bit. That, that noise is really, really awful. Right, we don't want to drive any faster than about 80 because of the horrible noise on the train. Oh, and it's done its funny lighting thing as well. Don't you just love train sim? Definitely got lighting issues on this route that they need to fix. Definitely, it's horrible. Too yellow, so we're just going to shut off and coast. Uh, I'm just checking what power notch we're in there. We are in idle. That's where we want to be. Don't you just love the way the lighting on train scene bugs out sometimes and then looks really awful? Hey, train boy again? That is very generous of you, my friend. Let's see the Discord. Go on, then. HST 67s. Potentially... Oh, Kidderminster, says train boy there. Just managed to read that. And Taunton. Nice one. Right, last signal did step up to two yellows as we approach Burgess Hill. It's nice that we're finally following something. We get a little bit of variation in the drive, which is always good. Steve, I think that's because of the dynamic weather. It still shouldn't be doing it, really, though. Right, stepped up to a green. We're now approaching Kima Junction. Yeah, K, I quite agree. It is is really annoying. So Kima Junction, that would take us back down to Lewis on the East Coastway route. <coughs> it's a little bit of track that's missing from game in my opinion. If we could merge routes and put little connections like that in, it would add so much scope to the game. As we pass through Withersfield Station. Hey, it's surely 8787. Hi Richard, a while ago I asked for advice when I joined my TOC as a trainer. Your advice to just go with the flow is working well, thank you. Awesome, really pleased to hear it. How's it, how's it going, Sean, the 8787? Got a green. The train in front has proper buggered off. They might, it might get looped at Hayward Seaf, we might get to pass it. As we pass over. Vale Viaduct, I want to say. Hey, Trainboy55, thank you very much once again. Uh, 
What do you think about the class 390? I am a fan. I like Pendolinos. Two yellows. Red is before Hayward Seed. I like Pendolinos. Um, I'm not going to lie. I've always always been a bit of a fan of Pendolinos. I know a lot of people don't like them. They think they're a bit cramped. But I, I think they're nice trains. I think they ride quite nice. Yellow, red ahead. And we're slowing down. Now in real life, of course, you'd be able to see that red signal from miles away because it's dead straight track. So you can kind of, you actually, you'd be able to see the signals at the end of the platform at Hayward Heath from this position. You'd be able to see the train in front in the platform. Uh, there is literally no rail joint sounds on the class 170. Now, this is continuous welded rail, but you should still get clickety clack over the points like uh, and bits like that. So let's have a little listen as we go through the points at Hayward Heath. Uh, Demonize, I've never been on a 185, 220. Yeah, again, I like voyages. I'm, I'm definitely a fan. And there is our red ahead. And this is quite common if you're doing like a, a last minute stock move like we're doing here, running up to the depot, it's quite common to um, be following something because you, you haven't got a booked pathway as such, you're kind of running out of path. And you always think, you know, can't the signal and put me round it? Just put me round it because I'm not stopping anywhere. But they normally won't do because they've got a booked order to run the train, so the train in front is a passenger train. It's in its book pathway, it's got a timetable to keep to. You're just kind of an extra move, you sort of almost don't matter. Yeah, so from this point here, you'd definitely be able to see the train in the platform at Hayward Heath. Um, you'd be able to sort of see what's going on. Typical. Just so we stop, it comes up to one yellow. Red's at the end of the platform at Hayward Heath. They should bring out Edinburgh to Penzance, Class 220. Demonised, that would be a monster of a route. I'm not saying no, but that would be a mon. We wouldn't do that in a single live stream, that's for sure. Yeah, Steve, the um, singles in the game are bad as well. The... So if you look out the other side of the tunnel now, it's clear. But once we get out there, the fog will come back, I expect. Um, I think it's fair to say that it's not aged well, this route. It's still a nice route to drive, but compared to kind of the um, the Todd 4 lighting effects and stuff in the newer Train Seawell 4 routes, I would love to see this overhauled and brought up to Train Seawell 4 standards. Oh, it's all gone horrible again. Right, we are red at the end of the platform. Leo Lowe, does a 1 Zulu 99 get priority? Yeah, 1 Zulu 99 normally would get priority. So for those of you who don't know, 1 Zulu 99 is a rescue train. So normally if you're going to rescue something, um, you know, the service is not working particularly well and you will normally get put in front of everything. Anakin, it did look like the shunting signal was off. I thought that as well as we approached it. I think it's just, it's just kind of, there's definitely a lighting bug on this route that needs looking into. Uh, two yellows. Yeah, Raw DC, the West Somerset treatment. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, da, 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 da. Why not Aberdeen to Plymouth? That is still a monster route. Right, we got a green. Let's get it going. Okay, so interesting fact, we are just passing through Hayward Heath Station. I have got some driver's eye view cab ride footage from Hayward Heath to... Acton Lane reception just up by Wilsdon. Uh, I am currently in the process of editing that video with my little moving maps and commentary and bits and bobs so that will be out on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Do keep an eye out for that. There is going to be a little bit of an increase in content at the moment. I'm looking at starting the Train Driver Rules series again and I've got a couple of vlog videos that I want to make. 
The reason there's going to be an increase in content, I'll be completely honest with you, I need to make videos because I need to make uh, a little bit more money off YouTube to pay for some model railway tracks and points and bits and bobs. So, um, so yeah, the con content might start coming out a little bit quicker. Uh, and also, I'm now on my summer roster, so I've got significantly more time off work, so I've actually got time to do stuff, so it's kind of worked out, um, worked out quite well. Ted Reed, I'm back after watching the footy. Who won, Ted? I, I don't even know who was playing, but who won? Uh, I think the sweet spot for routes is 50-ish miles. Look how dreary East Coast Mainline is. I, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same when it comes to routes. I'd rather have a route where there's a lot going on. East Coast Mainline for me is, is four stations. Is it four stations? It's get in the train, go, and then not a lot happens. So, yeah, I would rather a route like this. I, I like Five Circle. I mean, it's got its bugs and its graphical issues. Um, but as a route, I like it. It's the sort of route I like driving. I like um, Goblin, Suffragette Line. You know, there's, there's stuff going on. There's things to do on that route. East Coast Main Line, it's just like, ooh, Azuma, fast, go. Stop at four stations and, and game over, turn around and come back. I don't think it's got a great deal of playability. I think if it had some extra routes and some extra layers on it and some of the branch lines, you know, like Newark and stuff like that on it, it, it would be pretty cool. Um, but I, I just don't think it's got a great deal of, for me, it's just not got a great deal of playability. It's a nice route, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's my opinion. As we pass over the beautiful Ooze Valley Viaduct. Did the train stop at Balkan? We're going to find out now. It doesn't look like it did. We've got a green. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Sussex Rail Enthusiasts, Brighton to Portsmouth would be a great route for Train Sim World. I, I don't disagree with you, yeah? Lots and lots of stations on that route. If you're going to do Brighton to Portsmouth, surely you've got to have the Aran Valley on there as well, though. Power, please, for the train. The train is in full power, uh, KO. The train is in full power. So we are coming round the corner here. This area in real life is very well known for pheasants and the bridge we are passing under I believe is called Kemp Footpath or Kemp Bridge or something like that. But this is this area is very well known for uh, hitting pheasants and they get stuck in the fly doors on the train you pull into a station with a, a dead bird hanging out the front which isn't always pleasant as we pass through Balkham station. Locomotive location livery a train spotter from Somerset you are the third number on my stream with number 16. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Gonna give you number 16. 10 seconds for that Locomotive Livery Location if you can. What are you reckoning? Where is it? What is it? Debra, what's your favourite train? Favourite train to drive is probably the 57 or the 73. Um, we have got an 80 coming up, so just as we go into the tunnel, the line speed drops to 80. There it is, just coming up on us. Just at the other end of the tunnel, sorry. Uh, typical Nathan, we were talking about that earlier on. Yeah, that's going to be on the channel in the next week or so. Uh, the west, the sorry, the five circle with the update. Um, driven lies. I've never driven a class 92. I would. One of the trains I would really like to drive is the Caledonian Sleeper, which of course is 92s. I don't think it's it's not likely to happen, but yeah, if I had the opportunity, I'd really like to do that. Right, we've got a green. Are we crossing over here at Balkham Tunnel Junction? got no route indicator so it doesn't look like we are so we're going to carry on up the fast and we'll probably get crossed over at Ellswood I'd imagine although this would be the faster crossover so this is a 70 mile an hour crossover 
So this, normally if you're going onto the slow lines, this is where you get put across. And we do have a bit of clickety-clack over the points. So back in the days of 319s, the Brighton Main Line used to be 100 miles an hour from this point to, I believe, uh, Red Hill Tunnel. And the 319s were re-geared to do 100 miles an hour on this particular section of the track. Um, but that's progress for you. We're back down to 90. Lewis Gates, how often will your driver manager or competency manager enter the cab and do spot checks? I, uh, from memory, it's about once every six months. So we get something called... Oh, we don't want to quite get to 90 because that horrible sound I saw. We get something called... Um, UPM unplanned monitoring so that could be a could be on your black box it could be a manager that turns up at the location and just observes you driving from the ground if you like doing shunting um, if you're shunting in a yard they could be observing you could be listening in on your radio communications they could request the downloads between conversations you've had with signalers because that's all monitored so it, it could be anything like that um, yeah unplanned monitoring Need the 700s in temp, in, in temp there, in Free Bridges Depot. It's looking rather empty. Uh, Ludwig Tails, do I think it should have been... It, it's kind of that balance, isn't it? You know, how, how far do you take the route? How much further is Perth? I mean, Perth is kind of like where a lot of the trains terminate, so I, I can see why that would make sense. How much further up, up the line is it? Virtual Rail Driver, good evening, how are we doing? I can hear that noise too, Rafe. We have got some cautionary signals. 80 seems to be the kind of sweet spot, so we don't have to have that noise. Yeah, Concord, the route isn't complete about the 700. There is a mod for it, a timetable mod, and I don't have it, and I need to get it. I, I say that I don't have any mods at the moment because when I downloaded the Suffragette line, I was it was crashing on me constantly, so I ended up deleting all the mods that I did have. So I need, I need to go back and put some of them in. Um, there was like the Brighton Mainline Enhancement mod that we previewed on the stream, which puts graffiti in and um, some new fence textures and bits and bobs. This is Tinsley Green Junction. Red is protecting Gatwick Airport. Concord, I'm on Xbox, can't get the mods. Yeah, unfortunately, console players, when it comes to mods, you do kind of get the um, the short end of the stick. Jack, I'll try the same thoughts to look it up. Perth to McKinch is about 25 miles. So not a massive amount of extra route then. I, I guess the kind of the question is then, if you're going to expend, extend it to Perth, then you can say, why don't you take it up to Aberdeen? Um, am I on the right side of Scotland? My geography of Scotland is pretty terrible, I'm afraid. So they kind of, kind of got to draw the line somewhere, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. And we are red ahead. Hopefully, that's going to come off as we creep up to it. And like I said, we are going to get crossed onto the slow line somewhere. Um, the next place we can get crossed over is at Ellswood. That's come up to one yellow. But we won't take power, we'll just coast and hopefully we'll get two yellows. Uh, Steve, if you're referring to mods, there is a video on the channel which is the signal enhancement mod and there is a little tutorial attached to that video on how to install them so if you go and check back through that video um, hopefully that will answer your questions. Okay, uh, London Gatwick is not as busy as London Heathrow, you're correct but London Gatwick does take the title as the world's busiest single runway airport uh, I believe. If I am wrong then someone do correct me but I believe London Gatwick is the world's busiest single runway airport. Right, it looks like we've got a yellow up ahead. We have. So we'll give it a little bit of power just to maintain the speed. We'll let the train in front get away from us um, before we get going too much. 
Dara, what's um, so far? What's your most favourite route in Train Simulator? That's a difficult question because it depends on what mood I'm in. So some of my favourite routes to drive are, are Blackwall Branches. I'm really enjoying the Suffragette Line. I'm enjoying the Five Circle as well. Um, Birmingham Cross City. That, they would kind of be my go-to routes. Uh, South East and High Speed. The routes I sort of don't enjoy driving. I'm not a massive fan of Midland Main Line. It's, it's nothing personal. I just it's, it's kind of not my sort of route. Um, East Coast Main Line. I'm not a massive fan of that. Um, some of the kind of Northern Trans Pennine, um, Cathcart. It's, it's yeah. There's there's nothing wrong with them. It's just kind of personal preference. RAF Spotter, yeah, but Heathrow is my local and still holds the record for the busiest airport in Europe. Um, when they're landing on, I think it's 2-7 left and you go to Myrtle Avenue, Heathrow is, is fantastic. Birmingham Cross City is beautiful. Right, we've got a green up there. Let's get this thing going again. We are going to get crossed over in a minute. Probably about 20 minutes to half an hour left on this stream, guys. 171 of you lovely people watching. If you haven't already, please do hit the like button. Consider subscribing. That would be absolutely awesome. As we come through Hawley, let's press that button there and have a little look in the Discord. Trains of Somerset. It's a kettle. And that is my arch nemesis, a 69 on the bottom left. Northern 150 in the bottom right and top left. And don't forget, you can post your pictures in the live stream pictures page. And if you're not a member of our Discord server, you will find an invitation link to that in the description below. Concord 9289, I've spent the last the past 10 minutes trying to get a grip with SimSig. I quite honestly have not a clue. Uh, SimSig's a... If you load up one of the easy maps, that would be my advice. Load up something like, I think Royston's pretty simple. Don't kind of do... If you're kind of trying to do King's Cross or Brighton or something like that right off the bat, then yeah. It's it's quite intense. Sim 6 is one of those games, it looks completely and utterly boring and there's nothing to it. Yet I can sit there for five or six hours and just just waste so much time in that game. Then I go to bed and get told off by Mum Rail because I think she's sitting behind me. Isn't she? Yeah. I get, I, get, I get told off for having sat on the computer for hours, but as you know, time just disappears when you're playing. RAF Spotter, why don't you like the 69? Um, I am not allowed to comment on the 69. No, what can I say about the 69? The 69s are absolutely fantastic locomotives. There's nothing wrong with them. They're the best thing ever designed. Uh, fundamentally, they are really that they drive really, really nicely. Um, but due to social media policies and stuff like that, I will um, I will not talk too much about 69s. Uh, Lewis goes, if the ADD activates, is it an emergency brake application? What is the driver's knowledge to put put on the emergency brake? Uh, what do you mean by ADD, Lewis? So, a lot of different companies in different regions will have different acronyms. So, ADD is not one that I'm familiar with. Uh, typical Nathan, I believe 170s could technically operate in driver-only mode. Uh, if you had, like, platform, platform monitors or something like that. But I believe in passenger service, um, I believe they generally operate with a guard. But, yeah, if you had, like, platform-based monitors or... Uh, CD and RA dispatch, then there's no reason they couldn't operate in driver only mode. Um, Ludwig Towers, I would probably go West Coast Main Line. I just. I think, yeah. A personal preference again, pr but probably more West Coast Main Line. Lewis Gates, automatic drop down devices. Uh, again, I can't say I've heard of those, Lewis. Right, I'm expecting a route indicator to take me over a 30 mile an hour crossing. Um, this is one of those crossings where you would expect approach control. Because it's a 90 mile an hour line speed and the crossing's 30, I would expect the signal previous to be two yellows, one yellow, 
I'd approach the next one at red and it would clear up on my approach to a proceed aspect with a route indicator. So I'm only slowing down now because I know what route's been set by the game. But yeah, that, that would be approach controlled. There's no way you would approach this signal at line speed if you got the route indicator because it is 30 miles an hour over this junction. Thirty, he says, and still manages to take it at forty. I've, I've got. Sorry, ADD. Yeah, I've got you now. It's been a long time since I've been on that Electrostar. Yeah, it's the little light next to the line light. Um, what was the original question? Let's see if I can find it. If it activates, is there an emergency brake application, or is it driver's route? So I think we might be on cross terms, Lewis. Are you talking about on the pantograph or um, ADDs? One yellow. I'm not overly familiar with Southeastern train. They're going around the Red Hill line. Um, that looks absolutely terrible. Well, not too bad, actually. Certainly not brilliant, but not terrible. So we're stopping the free road here at Red Hill, um, and then we'll get the path set up to Selhurst. Uh, Artie, that'll be why I don't know nothing about them then, because all my knowledge has been on DC and diesel. So um, they're connected to the pantograph, they drop the pantograph if they go over height, for example. So you might be able to answer um, Lewis's question. Does that trigger an automatic uh, an emergency brake application? Oh, the train off of zero's got the road. That's really irritating. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait for probably a stopping train now and follow it all the way up. And see, as a driver now, I'd be really annoyed that I'm not in the platform road and can't go to the coffee shop. And I bet that's... This is, this is what you do as a driver. I bet that's stopping at all stations. Why has he let that train go? I'm assuming the signal is a he, which is a really bad thing to do. Why is the signal let that train go? It's probably stopping at all stations. We're empties. We would be out the way. And the signaller... You phone up the signaller and start complaining. And this is the reaction you get from the signaller. <laughs> Outside, never mind. <laughs> I've been looking for an excuse to use that. Right, DRA is in. We are in neutral. We need to set our path. Because that is where it ends. To Selhurst Depot. Uh, will it let me go in via Windmill Bridge? It will, won't it? I tell you what, we'll we'll go in via Sellers platform. We'll change engines Sellers platform and go in that way just to make it um, a little bit more interesting. Is that a one six five I can hear? Quite possibly Penguin because we got one six fives. You do have one six fives that come in and out of here to go around to Reading, but no, it isn't. Right into forward DRA off. I bet that train's stopping all stations. Windsor Davies is an absolute legend, Jurafest. I, I quite agree. Uh, me and my lovely wife sat down and watched. We watched it on our hot bum the whole, yeah. the entire. I'm, I'm not sure it's it's of its time. I think is what we have to say. It's of its time. Um, Jake Moxham, Deborah, I was on a train a couple of weeks ago and we got to the station and the driver asked for the guard to contact him twice and we stopped for about 10 minutes. What sort of thing can that be for? Uh, normally, something like that is going to be for like a passenger alarm. You might have a call for aid or a PASCOM alarm going off in one of the toilets. 
um, could be disruptive passengers, could be a fault on the train that the, the driver needs the guard to go and look at. Um, sometimes like if a circuit breaker is tripped in one of the equipment cupboards, uh, it might be easier for the guard to go and look at it and reset it. So it could, could be num could be a, a numerous amount of things. Yeah, as Stephen says they're possibly a PASCOM reset. Right, we've got one yellow as we approach Holmthorpe substation. So, because I'm pretty much certain the train in front is going to be stopping at Merston, Colson South, we are just going to cruise along quite merrily behind it. Approaching red signals is bad. We don't want to be approaching red signals. As train drivers, we're quite lazy. And if we're approaching red signals, we've got to think about what we're doing. And not only that, approaching red signals is a risky activity because there is the potential for just going along at this speed and I've, I've got absolutely zero risk of having a spad. So that's why, kind of, if we're running on cautionary aspects, it's always best just to hang back. Uh, Steve, yeah, ride the yellows, don't reach the red. Exactly that. It, it is It is easier just to, you know, it's easier just to hang back, take the yellows as they come. At the end of the day, you're not going to get home any quicker by chasing red lights. You're still going to be stuck behind the exact same train. And there is our red ahead. It's just stepped up to one yellow. So the next signal we're looking out for is on the end of the platform at Merstham. The train in front is going to be shifting away quite quickly now. There's no more stations until called Colston South. So what we want to see in an ideal world is we want to see that ping up to two yellows just before we go past it. And then I'll take the train speed up to about 40 um, and we'll assess the situation at the next signal. Please. Please. I mean, I could stop at it, but I'm not going to. There we go. That, that is pretty much exactly what we want to see in an ideal world. So now we're just going to put a little bit of power in. The train in front's accelerating away. That's going into section. The time we get around the corner to the next signal, we should see two yellows stepping up to green. And then knowing with a little bit of route knowledge and a little bit of knowledge of the timetable, knowing that the train in front is going to stop at Coulson South, um, there's no point in me going hammering up there at line speed. So I'll hold back at about 50, 60 miles an hour. It means we don't get that horrible noise on the, on the turbo star with the rivet bug. Um, then hopefully when we get to Coulson South, the train would have disappeared and we're just constantly following sort of yellows and greens and not having to approach any reds. So hopefully this is going to be two yellows stepping up to a green, or it might be green already. That's two yellows. If I don't see it step up to green, there we go, two yellows up to green. That's pretty much bang on what we want to see. Passing over the M25. I'm really going to take the train up to about, because I'm, like I say, I'm aware that the, the train in front is going to stop at Coulson South. So I'm going to take the train up to about 60 miles an hour. I think we're going to go a bit less. We're going to go about 50. That's just stepped up two yellows to green. That's a nice sort of distance to be from the train in front. If you're seeing two yellows to green, you're a nice distance behind it. As we approach Merstham Tunnel. Let's do this again. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Let's get those numbers in. Richard, do you have a favourite tock? Uh, not particularly, no. Whichever one gets me home on time. That was quick. There's not much delay on the stream tonight. Sussex Rail Enthusiast, you are the third number on my screen with number seven. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Let's give you box number ten sec. Box number seven, ten seconds. For that locomotive delivery location. Let me know what you're thinking in the chat as always. So 
So I've just shot off the power there. We're just going to let it coast. I expect we're probably going to get some cautionary signals around the corner. Richard, are you looking forward to the Leven branch coming to Train Sim World? Any route is a good route. Obviously, that's just an extension on the five circle, but anything we get has got to be good. Two yellows. See, my timing was absolutely terrible. I've still gone too fast. What we can do, though, is get a big lump of break in. Lewis Gates, <coughs> opinion on the Class 99. I don't know too much about them. They're going to be Stadler Euro Dual units. That's pretty much all I know at this moment in time. The pictures I've seen so far are looking pretty good. yellow so you've just seen the train go over the top on the quarry lines uh, our red so you're going to see a red light on the quarry line on the left and our red is to the right of that you've got two signals next to each other you know in real life you can tell off these signals so we'll get some idea what you're doing so if you get two yellows on the next one your red is at Stokes Nest Junction if you get a green on the next one you're clear through Stokes Nest Junction and this is the signal that projects course and south uh, Jake Moxham I think they should bring up to Horsham on the route um, Horsham on the route and then free to Blackfriars would be pretty cool I'd also argue the case for I'd argue the case for um, the Brighton line branches so Caterham Tattenham East Grinch in Uckfield. Uckfield would be a pretty good one, although if we had Uckfield, I'd probably want it to be based in the days of Thumpers. One yellow, our red is at Coulson South. So you've got two signals next to each other there. Two yellows, our red is at Stokes Nest Junction. No point getting too excited because the training for it's probably going to stop at Purley. Artie, is that for me? So much knowledge? Surely not. Red is at Stokes Nest Junction. We're going round to the right, round to the left. Next signal's on the end of the platform at Coulson South. Uh, what are we reckon in locomotive location delivery? Concord's gone. 7.30 West Midlands, Harrow and Willstone. Virtual Rail Driver's gone Harrow. KO's gone Birmingham, Moor Street. That <laughs> Artie, surprisingly, yes it is. Why? Thank you very much, Artie. Thank you very much. I shall... Uh... And Artie. Happy birthday! <laughs> right, green. The next possible red signal could be protect. No, uh, end of the platform at Pearly. So we are at least into Pearly at the moment. So the train in front might have crossed over the junction at Stokes Nest. I'm going to see what the next signal says before we give it too much power. Yeah, we... Oh, okay, we're going over at Stokes Nest. Interesting. So we're going to have to be put back somewhere. That's very interesting routing. Okay. It's a 70 mile an hour crossover at Stokes Nest. Random username. Thank you very much. Goodbye, my friend. It's very unusual. 
because we need to come back onto the slows at Selhurst, so it's, it's un, it is unusual routing. And then we go straight back up to 90. And you can see Reedham Station on the left hand side, that is the Tattenham Corner Branch. Yes, yeah, Steve, def definitely an odd route. I was not expecting to come over there. And the Tattenham Corner Branch that I was speaking about on the left goes through Reedham Station and then it sort of curves around and comes back under the line at this point here and then joins us on the right hand side at Purley. There is the train that we've been following. That's the one we followed out of Red Hill. The race is on. Only the speed limit on the slow lines that the train on the right is on is um, 60 miles an hour. We can do 90 at the moment. R60 starts at South Croydon. Warning about now. That's for your 60, and if you break on an Electrostar, if you break step one at this bridge here, you're doing 60 exactly where you need to be doing 60. Let's see how it works on a turbo. 156 Andrew, good evening, hello. Yeah, the brakes on the turbo are not quite as strong. Jeff Epi, welcome to Devon, new subscriber. Great to have you here, my friend. 60 starts at the London end of the platform. Oh, face full of tree. At the country end of the platform, not the London end. And speed limit's going to drop to 45 in a minute. Let's see what route we get at East Croydon. We are coming towards the end of the stream. One yellow. It looks like we're going to have to wait now and get crossed onto the back over onto the slow lines this is not how to approach a red signal this is way too fast southeastern must be on divert today there's a lot of their trains around here that's the one we've just overtaken isn't it no Emotional damage. <coughs> hey, to Steve Richard. Hello, welcome. New subscriber. Great to have you. Watch out for that tree. Yep. Yeah. Why are my brakes not working? That's like brake step three. Please stop. Signal looks really, really washed out there. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to tell what route indicator is going to come on. Um, DR8 and into neutral. We could turn the passenger lights off as well. That would be a pretty good idea. Busy old section of railway line this is. Busy old section of railway line. So we do need to cross over. I'm just trying to think. Do we need to cross over this side of Croydon or can we get over the other side? Hey, 156 Andrew. Thank you very much, my friend. And happy Easter to you. That reminds me, I've got some... I've got a white chocolate Lindor Easter egg in the freezer. Chocolate in the... F I mean, my, my Easter egg is in the freezer. Is that acceptable? Is there, is there anything wrong with having frozen chocolate? And it's white chocolate. Oh. Oh. I've just been handed a pot with... This is going to make some people sick on my stream. Do you know that? 
olives and chorizo. Yeah. Well, I'm prone to give a pretty Nesca, so. Olives and chorizo. Right. Okay, oh, we got the signal now. Uh, one yellow. Doesn't. Can't see any particular route indicator illuminated, but the points do look like they are set to go across, so. Twenty five through the crossovers here at East Croydon. East Croydon is a mirror image of itself. Six platforms, platform one and platform six are the only non reversible and non permissive platforms. All the other platforms are reversible and permissive. If you're going into platform one, you've got a thirty mile an hour restriction. All crossovers are twenty five. Easy to remember. Chorizo is really nice. Brakes on this don't seem like they're working very well. Typical note from train, shouldn't the vigilance be going off every time you move it into forward? Yeah, normally it does and you have to lift your foot off the pedal and press it down again. That's that's a good point. It does on Electrostars, I don't know about turbos, but I'd, I'd imagine that it would, yeah. DRA neutral, brakes set free. Typical signals come off. The next signal on the end of the platform at East Croydon is a multi spad. Forewarned is forearmed. We know it's a multi spad, so we can, you know, if you're aware of it, you have a heightened sense of awareness and risk perception going towards it. are red ahead. Uh, you've got a bit of a read across risk here, that's why. Olives are nice. Do you like olives? Oh! Oh. I thought that was a pip, it's not. I was going to say, they're not pitted. Okay, so this is a multi-spad signal. You've got to read across risk to the, the signal on the right hand side there. Let's just come up to two yellows. Our red is at Cottage Bridge Junction. Speed limit's currently 45, dropping down to 40. Just stepped up, just stepped up to green. Our red signal is probably the one just before Sailhurst Junction. KO, we're just approaching the depot now. Oh, the olives are really nice. I've got to stop munching now, though. We've got a green. That puts us into the platform at Celeste. Line Street's going to drop to 30 over 40. Just at the bank here. The start of the bank. This is Windmill Bridge Junction. There's our 30 over 40. I just said it and I still managed to speed. If you're coming up here in a freight train, this is quite a climb. Two yellows, red at the end of the platform at Sellhurst. Train you can see going underneath us has just come round from Gloucester Road Junction and West Croydon. Uh, that's predominantly London Overground services on there. Although saying that the southern services to I think Epsom Downs do run that way. One yellow as we approach the platform here at Celeste. Yeah, someone's saying about the graphics. Um, Train Sim World 2 route. You can definitely see the improvements in the game over the years. It, it, definitely, definitely you can. And we are approaching the red, so let's get some break in. Uh, Richard, what drink do you have before driving a freight train? Anything non-alcoholic? Mm. 
What have I done? What have I done? Why did my camera angle suddenly just change? Okay, everything went really weird then for a second approaching that red. That was a little bit annoying. Okay, DRA. Neutral. Red's up. We're empty coaching stock, so the last thing we want to do is release the doors. You'd be amazed how easy it is to do that. Literally, force of habit. You just open the doors, and then it's... Definitely tea and biscuits for your manager if you do that. Um. Okay, out we go. Uh, I always walk around to the back of the train. I do it in real life. And just physically check that your reds are up at the back. It's just really good practice to do that. Hello. No, sorry, this train isn't in service. No, this train doesn't go to London. No, sorry. Can't you? What does it say on the side of the train? This is not in service. I love passengers. I think I'm the only one. And we should be able to get into the depot from here. So... I do like free roam. It gives you so much potential to kind of do funky things like this. I think it's it's one of the best things they put in game. Um, day running, off, key in. Into neutral. GSMR on. GSMR turns on automatically when you put your key on. Um, set path. How far into the depot shall we go? Will it let us into the shunt neck? Oh, that's... That gets one of those for the signaller because... Those of you who are in the know will know that signalling combination there... It's not particularly good. Nobody saw me roll back, right? That didn't happen. So, the yellow light's telling me I can proceed at caution, as far as the next signal. Uh, the two white lights is telling me to proceed as far as the line is clear, being prepared to stop short of any obstructions. That is a conflicting message. Yeah, Chris, we're gonna we're gonna get the RT three one eight five signaling irregularity format for that. Yes, yeah, Steve, the hill start does work. I just wasn't pressing it. And we need to change our lights over to marker lights as well. So marker lights only for inside depots. As a freight driver, this is a useful little spur. Uh, when we do our HTT circuits and sit circuits, this is quite a useful little spur to be able to get from Selhurst round to Norwood. So it's not used by it's not used by in-service passenger trains. It's kind of shunt moves only. Um, but doing a shunt, it's 15 round here. Doing a shunt via the depot to get round to Norwood is quite a useful little get out of jail free card. There are a couple of ground position light signals coming up that we need to worry about. Monica, GSMR is not registered. That is as, that is as far as the GSMR goes. Um, we don't get the head code indication or anything. Even on when it's on five circle, you don't get the head code indication. So there is our first ground position light signal that we need to worry about. So the signal on the the gantry coming up on the left hand side, so the one that's just playing a red, that is Tango 2-2 signal, and that is the most spadded signal in the country. Oh, we should have routed through the wash road. Uh Jackson's Train and Bus Adventures, if they are on it, then yes, but so far I don't know what the traction is going to be. There is our second ground position light signal. 
that red there is not ours. Uh, the fuel point is kind of over there. And then we should get a... There we go. Y is telling us we're staying in the yard. I think you get an M or a, an... Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve. You get a, an S or an F, potentially. So I don't... I, I signed the four arrivals and then back out onto the main line, so... I'm now lost. I'm, I'm beyond my route knowledge. So directly in front of us in real life would be Norwood Junction Station, uh, which isn't modelled in any way, shape or form. It's literally this, this kind of buffer stop here on the right hand side. Um, that's where the platform of Norwood Junction is. So we don't need to go all the way in, we just need to go in as far as is in clear. Now we don't have any... <coughs> I'll shut the train down then and tell you that. So, brake step free, DRA, straight into off, key off, and out, reds up. So as you can see here, on the left hand side we've got conductor rail. And on the right hand side we've got open rail. So there's no, what we call, there's no safe walking route to walk here. I think there is in real life, I think there's a path that goes up the middle of these two tracks, but in game, we're not seeing any safe walking routes, so what we're going to do, as we've only got one unit, the safest thing for us to do is to walk through the actual uh, unit itself. If you had two units on 170s, you can't walk through them. Hopefully we're in clear of that signal in the rear, and we'll move this onto the fuel point, and that will be the end of the stream. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. We are in well clear. Uh, I should imagine at this point coming into the depot, one of the depot shunter drivers would have taken the train off of us, quite possibly. Um, which is always a nice thing when that happens. So in a lot of companies, the, the shunters are authorised to drive within the confines of the depot. So it's always very nice when a, a shunt driver takes the train off of you. Uh, okay, so set path, and we'll go up to uh, trying to work out on the map where we want to end up. Um, that looks about right. And there we go, ground position light signals come off. The ground position light signals in here will be controlled by the local panel. There is a, um, there is like a signaling panel within Selhurst Depot. Or oh, we pick it up off the stop ball, says Steve. There we go. First hand information. Um, locomotive location livery. Jackson's Trains Bus Adventures, I'm going to count that as one number. So that would make Peter G third number on my screen. Let's complete our shunt move first. Shunting is a high risk activity. Although it's slow, it's a very high risk activity due to the number of <coughs> um, points, ground <coughs> oh, excuse me, points, ground position light signals, um, potential distraction from activities going on uh, within the yards and sidings. Lots and lots of things that can go wrong during shunting activities. And a lot of yards are 5 miles an hour, Selhurst is 15 miles an hour. And there we've got a stop board, that I would imagine applies to the line on the left hand side. Uh, the one coming up I would imagine applies to us. Stop telephone signaller. Uh, even if you've got authority to pass a stop board, it's still good practice to stop at it and then restart the move. So I don't know how far our authority our authority takes us all the way up to there. So I don't know if that stop board's gonna Yeah, I don't think that stop board's gonna register if we go past it, so we'll pretend we've done that and we've got authority to proceed. Uh no that applies to all lines. 
Steve just said, the previous stop board. See, that's where the your route knowledge is going to come in really, really handy. It's going to be really important to know what stop board applies to what line. And then we want to get just set clear of these sets of points here. Then we're back onto the fuel point and we are game over. Um, locomotive location livery was going to be Peter G, number 17. Let's play locomotive livery location. Here we go. Number 17, 10 seconds, guys. Locomotive livery location if you can. What are your thoughts? Let me know. And we are well and truly in clear there. So, it's the great thing about shunting. You're constantly changing ends. DRA, off, key out, reds up. Back down to the other end of the train. This is the last move. It's really handy if you've got two drivers when you're doing these sorts of moves. Because you have one driver in each cab. Train driver Sam, good evening, hello, welcome. Marker lights only in depots if we're doing it correctly. GSMRs. If you're shunting in a depot, typically you wouldn't register your GSMR because you wouldn't have a head code. Um, but when you put your key on it to turn on, you'd want to make sure you've got GSMR dash R GSM dash RGB that's come up. Um, but you wouldn't register it. So we're set to forward. We're going to probably have to remove the path and then reset the pathway onto I believe that's the fuel road there okay let's go so the shunter would be giving us permission to start the move so the shunt you'd either have a shunt driver driving the train or the shunter would be in the train with you or on the ground uh, if you're in a depot you don't move without shunter's permission it's simple as that always get shunter's permission before you do anything in a depot Uh, Leo Low, uh, train driver Sam's already answered your question. Yes, GSMR does have cab to cab functionality. And this is one of the important things about shunting. You want to make sure all the points are set for your movement. That one there isn't. This is where you're cursing the shunter because they haven't done their job right. It not, will it not let me interact with the points? Really? We've got to do it on the mini map. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, technically, I should have set the DRA there because when entering or leaving a cab is circumstances for setting the DRA. David, hi Richard. I used to drive the West Coastway route Brighton to Portsmouth Harbour back in the mid 90s. Yeah, that's one bit of the Southern Network I don't sign at the moment, unfortunately. It's a <coughs> interesting bit of route with lots and lots of stations. Cross train spotting LLL is a class 196 at Nuneaton. All these points are set against us. That looks like it's set the right way now. Did I stop too close to it? No. Last move. Hey. Lots of back in and forth, toing and throwing to get the train to where we want it. And there we are on the fuel point. Can you interact with the fuel point here? I don't think you can. But then what would normally happen if we're on duty here? 
we're gonna we're gonna berth the train here. We're gonna let the uh, the guys come out and do the fueling. Normally, it won't be the driver that does it because you need specific competencies to hook the fuel lines up and and whatnot. So we'd put the train here, go and have a cup of tea, come back when it's all done, and be on our merry way. I'll go off to our next working or whatever we've got to do. So six foot away from the stops. Break step three, DRA, into, well, straight into off we can go. I suppose we could shut, if we're going to be stopped here for a little while, we could shut the engine down. And red lights up. Into off. Always close the window before you leave the train. Uh, we've done the DRA there, haven't we? Yes, we have. All's good, all's good, all's good. Key is out. Always remember to take your key out. The amount of times I've left keys in trains, you wouldn't believe. And there we are. Oh, okay. Um. That's interesting. Oh, so we can pick up the fuel hose, but we can't actually do any fueling with it. I never knew you could do that. That's pretty cool. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, that, that, that is pretty cool. I like that. That is pretty neat. And we walk away, and we have a cup of tea. There we go, guys. That was quite enjoyable. I, I do like the free roam mode when you can jump into it and you can do stuff like that when you can just make it up as you go along. And that sort of scenario is a realistic thing that can happen. And I think when we create scenarios, that's what we need to look at doing. Um, I do want to do a bit more in the scenario planner, but I think you can only have like 10 AI services. So I like going into timetable mode and then being able to set something up. So what I would really like to be able to do is go into timetable mode, layer a service into it like we've just done there, and actually set a description and save that as a scenario. I think that'd be a really neat feature to have in the future. Anyway, let's play locomotive livery location. GJ, I think you have to take the fuel cap off. We'll go back and check that really quickly. Um, locomotive location livery, Trent Trains. Thank you very, very much for sending this one in, my friend. I think a couple of people have now got this right, but let's press that button there. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. Yeah, you've got the clock on the tower there on the left and that bridge, of course, to give it away as Nuneaton. And that is a West Midlands Railway, class 196. Pretty smart looking units, those. But yeah, well done to everyone who got that right. Trent Trains sent that one in. Let's just go very quickly, double vine boom, and check this taking the fuel cap off. I would imagine it's not modelled on the 170. That's going to be my kind of hunch. Yeah, we can't click it. So, unfortunately, yeah, no interaction with that, I'm afraid. Yeah, never mind, never mind, never mind. But there we are. Thank you very, very much for watching, everybody. It is really appreciated. 172 of you lovely people still here at the end, which is brilliant. So, if you have enjoyed yourself, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, you're also more than welcome to join our Discord channel. You'll find the link to that down in the description below. And you can follow me on my social media channels, which will come up on the screen as soon as I press the button. There we go. Facebook and Twitter, rarely updated social media channels, but you are welcome to check out the stuff that I have got over there. Um, you can also check out our website, and if you do want to send us any pictures for locomotive location livery, you can do via www.dadrail.co.uk. Thank you very much to Astro Penguin, Train Driver Sam, RT, uh, TR9, who have been moderating today. Um, thank you very much to all the channel members, Jake, um, Gareth Kemp84. Uh, and everybody else who's been in the channel tonight um, as membership, Josh as well. Not Josh, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> uh, and thank you to each and every one of you for watching. It is really appreciated. There we go. Another stream. Next one we do will probably be... Well, not probably be. The next one we do will be Five Circle uh, with the enhancement mod. So do look out for that one. I'm going to press my button there. That should hopefully start the end screen music. All that is left for me to do is say, I want one of those glasses of wine that's just gone past me. I'm going to go and eat my frozen chocolate now. Bye!